Hello, my name is uh, Walter Scott uh, and I have invited into the uh, studio today quite a lot of uh, waste material which if the writing on the packet is anything to go by is currently unrecyclable. Um, but actually uh, I uh, strongly believe that a lot of this material is recyclable and we can come on to why that is in a bit. Um, I have uh, an uh, increasingly uh, personal, emotional interest in the whole issue of waste. I have had for a long time and I really want to know where this material ends up and I would really like assurance that it will end up in a more productive place than in landfill or burnt up and going into the uh, atmosphere. 23 years ago as a business undergraduate I wrote a 10,000 word dissertation in which I explored the possibilities of, of waste material being um, put to better use in UK manufacturing. That was about six months or a year after the 1996 landfill tax had been introduced by John Gummer. And today, when I engage uh, any number of local authorities around me, I am quite well assured of where different types of recyclable waste are heading to be turned into productive materials. And that gives me an enormous amount of confidence as a consumer uh, who plays obviously a significant role in producing waste material. But what I'm not happy about are these types of material, which I continue to stuff into the bin along with the potato peelings and I know nothing about what happens to it when I put my bag out onto the front doorstep on a Tuesday morning. Um, I would just like to explore a few of the items that I have invited into the studio today, and I'm extremely grateful to the, uh, the producers of this material for supplying it to me. I will just take out, to begin with, digestives. Now, but Vitis who make this product have gone with a number of other companies um, into a collaborative partnership with a company called TerraCycle, which I believe is now a global company, and it is able to use this packaging. It turns it into uh, a product. It can do that. Likewise, TerraCycle have got an agreement um, or a scheme for confectionery packaging. So these delicious Haribo Gold Bears, their packaging, along with the likes of Snickers, that can all be taken along to specific TerraCycle confectionery scheme points and it will get turned into something productive. Whether or not, as a uh, reasonably occasional consumer of these products, I'm going to remember or have the inclination to do that, I don't know. I would hope so at some stage. Also, on the TerraCycle front, we have got some real big boy packaging. I mean, this is meaty stuff. This is foil packaging coated in plastic. Uh, this is eatable. And thankfully, TerraCycle are now able to take these great big dry roasted bags and they can recycle it. And it says TerraCycle on the back of the packet so the consumer should have a pretty good idea if they're interested of what they can do with it. What's not so clear from the likes of Doritos and Kettle Chips um, is uh, that these are also in scope of that same scheme as well. It's the same kind of packaging. But what uh, Kettle Chips, for example, haven't done is to uh, pay a TerraCycle um, to be able to put the recycle onto the back of the bag. And that is uh, possibly a bit of a thought coming on somebody's part somewhere in Another thing to mention, also excitingly, is cheese. Now this is breathable plastic. This feels completely different to that lot there. This feels like the kind of thing that you could quite happily wear as a cagoule. Um, and the happy news is, is that TerraCycle have gone into an agreement with Cathedral City. So you can 
take these bags along to the cheese packet recycling collection points of Evercycle, which are unfortunately different for the ones for confectionery. What, again, it doesn't say on the back of, say, the Tesco medium cheddar packet is that you can take these along as well. A point there for Tesco, that if you were to advertise TerraCycle on the back, you would be playing your part in uh, helping to scale up TerraCycle operations. We then come on to another interesting thing that I have discovered in recent months. Now, I am a massive consumer of oats. I will eat tons of oats, um, half a ton in the morning. On the back of this Tesco organic oats bag, it says that you can take these bags along to large branches of Tesco and they will accept them. As I've got quite a lot of them, I will be doing exactly that. But the interesting point is then when you get onto other kinds of packaging from other supermarkets, such as these uh, flatbread wrappers from Tesco uh, and Tagliatelle, which... Um, uh, which says it's not currently recycled, but it's exactly the same kind of plastic. So my question here is whether Tesco would be happy to take this other packaging as well and add it into that scheme. Question for Tesco, but also for Sainsbury's as well. There is enormous scope, I think, to scale up uh, that kind of collection, and I would really like to know where that waste ends up. Um, the question is uh, then, if you can do it for that kind of plastic, why can't you do it for this kind of plastic? Now this is also cereal packaging as well, it holds the same kind of food arguably, you know there's a bit more sugary, I don't know whether that has an impact, simply loosely. Um, it serves essentially the same kind of purpose, but none of this packaging is recyclable. It all says boldly and boldly on the back of the packaging it's not currently recycled. So the question for the likes of Spa, Tesco, uh, Sainsbury's and so forth, use all this packaging. Why not use that kind of plastic so that you can add it into those collection schemes? Is that not a very, very simple uh, and straightforward answer? There's then an interesting uh, kind of late runner, which is this Co-Fresh um, uh, Bombay Mix bag. And when you look on the back, there is a, a little bit of a suggestion that you should put this into the bin. No mention at all of, uh, there is no, no recycling information. So my question for Co-Fresh is, uh, why aren't you supplying information on what you can do with this? Uh, bag uh, and again what scope is there potentially for being able to adopt that kind of plastic I then get on to a happy story which uh, having fretted as a very very cons keen consumer of nuts and walnuts and almonds in particular this is really wonderful high grade packaging sealable vacuum Eatable. This is the kind of stuff that you could be using over and over and over again for lots of different purposes. And I wonder whether these things aren't themselves potentially products and potentially products that if you manufacture them in such a way, potentially could they be cleaned and could they be re reused again in that form. But thankfully, it does say on the back of these packets that you can take them along to a large branch of Tesco and add them in along with that. So that is good news. And then um, we come along the top here. Um, I am a keen drinker of coffee. I do drink quite a lot of coffee. And you, so this is why I have a, 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 a proud array of... Um, of different kinds of coffee packaging, but it's all pretty much the same, not surprisingly, plastic and foil lined. Exactly the same as the bags for these KP nuts. So, could I take these along to my 
TerraCycle snack bag recycling point and add these coffee bags in, would they be taken? And if they can be taken, why wouldn't some of these uh, coffee companies start thinking about how to link in with TerraCycle? And would TerraCycle be prepared to open up the scope of its snack scheme to include these? Because at the moment, these say, all of them, they are not yet recycled. And there is a lot of material here, considering that it has taken me hardly uh, about three months to produce this. And then there is just other material up here. A lot of packaging, a lot of bags, absolutely no indication at all to me about where this stuff is going to end up. And I haven't really begun to collect all the packaging and the bags that uh, I um, that come with fruit and vegetables. An enormous amount of stuff, very, very low grade, rustly stuff, not the kind of thing that you would think twice about sticking into the bin. But I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables and I'm producing a lot of this stuff. I doubt if it could ever be turned into anything productive, but I would really like to know. And so um, in the next few days, I will be seeing what I can do with this lot at my local TerraCycle collection points and at a large branch of Tesco. And in the meantime, I would really just like to hear from anyone else who's got uh, experience of these feelings about waste and a real deep anxiety about growing mountains of waste around us and the simple fact that there seems to be uh, anathema and inaction from the relevant authorities on what we're going to do about this kind of stuff. Thank you very much.